Hey everyone, welcome back to another slow cooker recipe. Today I have prepped for you all a pumpkin cheesecake. The crust is made out of graham crackers and bananas, believe it or not, and the filling is with cashews, dates, and other delicious filling. This recipe can be entirely made in the slow cooker, and these days I prefer to make my homemade cheesecakes in the slow cooker. Why? Because the slow cooker cooks at a constant temperature and makes cooking in a water bath very easy and simple, and I'm gonna show you today how to do it. My only recommendation is that you make this recipe the day before you want to serve it up, because like all cheesecakes, it needs to set overnight. However, if you do wanna make this the day of, it does work okay, but it will be slightly more wobbly in the middle if you let it refrigerate for four to five hours, but ideally overnight you want it to rest. This recipe is perfect for this fall season. You can make it for a get together. You can make it for a Thanksgiving meal. You can make it for what I'm making it for, which is a sunny night Halloween themed movie night with my husband and I. You can also enjoy it at Christmas as a holiday season or any other holiday holiday that you celebrate because the pumpkin season is here. It's not going anywhere until, in my opinion, after January 1st. So let me show you how to make this healthy and delicious slow cooker pumpkin vegan cheesecake. Welcome back to an extraordinary recipe, everybody. We are gonna start by adding 18 vegan graham crackers, two bananas, 1.5 cups of almond flour, and a teaspoon of ground cinnamon to a food processor. I use 365 vegan graham crackers. I think they're just regular graham crackers from Whole Foods and they're naturally vegan. Toss those into your food processor in addition to bananas for healthy sweetness and they also help the graham crackers combine. Add a teaspoon of that cinnamon and the almond flour. This is homemade. You can also use store-bought. I make my homemade almond flour with the leftover pulp from my almond cow. If you're interested in this product, I'll leave it linked in the description. It's one of my favorite products that I've recently purchased because I can make my almond milk completely fresh and to my own preference every single week from the comfort of my own home. It is zero waste if you use the almonds in other recipes such as I do and you will have the cleanest, most delicious almond milk every single week. Your food processor will naturally make this crust come together as long as you just let it blend on low or high speed for a while. It will have a sticky texture, but it's perfect for what we need it for, which will be to line the cheesecake pan. I like to add compostable parchment paper to the bottom. I clip in the side and then I cut with some scissors the excess parchment paper that is on the outsides of the cheesecake pan. Once I've done that, I grease the pan the parchment paper included, and I spread the grease all across the pan. This ensures that when you release your cheesecake from the pan, it does not stick to either the bottom or the sides of your mold. Once you've completed this task, you want to take out all of the crust from your food processor and add it to the very bottom of your mold with a hand that is ideally a little wet from some water to resist sticking from the crust, you will press the crust of your cheesecake to the bottom and then to the sides of your spring foam pan. I like to allow an inch, an inch and a half of crust on the sides, so this does take anywhere between 10 to maybe 12 minutes to get an even thin layer at the bottom of your spring foam pan and also making sure that those edges are really nice and close and giving it a little bit of height. So now we're gonna let the crust chill in the fridge while we make our filling. The filling is gonna be entirely made in the Vitamix because we're gonna be using cashews, dates, whole food ingredients. So we really need that high speed blending capabilities. If you do not already have a Vitamix, I highly recommend you have one. They have a lifetime warranty. My Vitamix 
base broke and I sent it in and they fixed it for free. So it really, really, really helps to have one. If you are interested in one, there's a link in the description to the one that I love if you are wanting to look at Vitamix options out there. So let me show you how to make the pumpkin filling now that's totally made in the blender and comes together in like 15 minutes. After that, we're gonna dump the filling into the pie crust and let it bake in the slow cooker. the explanation of the ingredients. I already showed you a clip of the soaked cashews and dates. We have 12 mutual dates that have been soaking with the cashews. I just pitted them so they're nice and empty. And we have our two cups of cashews rinsed. And I've saved just the little bit of soaking liquid on the side because I don't want to waste it in case the mixture seems too dry. Now for our sort of cheesecakey ingredients, we have a cup of pumpkin puree right here. We have four ounces of store-bought vegan cream cheese. You can also use silken tofu. I have a homemade pumpkin syrup. I will leave the sort of comparison or adaptation if you want to use just sugar. And then I have half a cup of my favorite non-dairy yogurt. So that will be sort of our cheesecake ingredients. In addition to, we have a tablespoon of vanilla extract and two tablespoons, two and a half tablespoons of lemon juice because I really like my cheesecake just a little bit tart. And since this recipe is like pumpkin forward, very warm flavors, I thought a little bit of extra lemon juice would make it really tasty. And for our spices, I have two tablespoons of pumpkin pie spice. I have one and a half teaspoons of monk fruit sweetener because I just love it and it kind of adds that extra sweetness, especially when you're using whole food plant-based sweeteners like dates and a third cup of arrowroot powder to make sure that it all stays congealed once cooked. So all we have to do with these ingredients is pop them into the Vitamix, give it a really, really good blend until it's nice and smooth, not too thick, but not too runny. We pop it into the mold that is chilling in our fridge right now, and then we cook it in the slow cooker with a little bit of water in a water bath for two hours. In a high-speed blender, you will add those cashews and dates. I highly recommend a Vitamix for this recipe because it ensures the creamiest, smoothest vegan cheesecake. If you're interested in this product and the one I know and trust and love, I will leave it linked in the description as well. And you want to add all of those ingredients that I just mentioned in the description of of the filling ingredients to the blender and start blending. If your Vitamix is kind of slow to blend those cashews, I like to add a cup of that soaking liquid. So I do reserve that from after I rinse my cashews and my dates and I blend until it's completely smooth. It should be an orange hue, but you will definitely tell that the dates are really nice and blended because you'll see little bits, but to the taste, the cashews and the dates should be completely emulsified. Add the entire mixture to your springform pan that's been hanging out in the refrigerator and with a spatula gently and evenly spread the cheesecake filling until it covers the circumference of your springform pan. I do not like to tap this on the counter because I actually like the airiness that the bubbles reserve and that baking soda will help it rise once cooking in the slow cooker. Add two cups of water to your slow cooker. I like to then add small ramkins to the bottom of my base. I added aluminum foil to my springform pan to ensure that no moisture gets into the cheesecake filling and then I cover it completely tightly and I cook on high for two to two and a half hours. So the trick to perfectly creamy cheesecake is to bake it in a water bath. You always do this in the oven and you also do it in the slow cooker and it works perfectly. The top of your cheesecake once it's done baking will seem kind of watery don't worry about that. It's just a little bit of condensation, but once you let it rest for an hour after baking, that condensation will evaporate and then you'll put it in the fridge and it'll stiffen. But that water bath ensures that everything within the cheesecake is baked evenly, that one section does not rise higher than the other, nor will it cave post-bake. 
Furthermore, because we are making a vegan cheesecake, the filling does not contain any eggs. So I always add a teaspoon of baking powder to my cheesecakes to ensure that it rises just a little bit so that the filling is fluffy and creamy and not dense in any way. Those are my tricks for really good cheesecake in the slow cooker. Now we'll tune in after it's done baking for the end products and the following steps, and then I'll show you what it looks like tomorrow morning. If you follow the filling ingredients according to the ones that I've listed here, I do recommend you bake this cheesecake for two and a half hours in your slow cooker. After it's done baking, you will release the lid. There will be a little bit of condensation on the top that will go away after 30 minutes at room temperature. Refrigerate your cheesecake overnight. It does not need to be covered so that it sets. The following day, you'll see your cheesecake has been firmly set. It's been slightly released from the edges of your springform pan and all you need to do is unclick the springform pan, gently release it, remove it gently from the top, and your perfect vegan slow cooker pumpkin cheesecake is ready to be enjoyed. I like to serve this up as is. You can enjoy it with some vegan vanilla ice cream, non-dairy vanilla ice cream, or you can add a little bit of some coconut-based Cool Whip. If you all like this recipe, this is near and dear to my heart and one of my absolute favorites. Please subscribe to the channel for more. Recipes will be released every single Friday and I also post daily shorts. See you next time.